So far, what we've done is understood collision in one dimension. That is, the two interacting masses are moving in a straight line. Now, what would happen if the motion is in two dimension? Would the laws of linear momentum hold for motion in two dimension as well? So the good part is that the law of conservation of linear momentum is true for two dimension motion as well. And if it happens to be an elastic collision, then the law of conservation of kinetic energy also holds true. So let us say if there are two masses, one is mass m1 and the other is mass m2 and they have a collision so that the resulting collision is two dimensional, then we can say that initial momentum of mass m1 plus the momentum of mass 2 initial should equal to the sum of momentum of the two masses after the collision. So we say P1 final is the momentum of mass M1 after the collision and P2 final is the momentum of mass 2 after the collision. And as I said, if the collision is elastic in nature, we can also say that the kinetic energy of mass 1 before the collision plus kinetic energy of mass 2 before the collision should equal to the sum of kinetic energy of the two masses after the collision. So let's also understand what exactly we mean by two-dimensional motion over here. So if mass M1 were to hit mass M2 head-on, what it means is that it hits somewhere right in the center so that they continue to move in a straight line after the collision as well. So if you play the game of carom board or billiards, you would know that if mass M1 were to hit mass M2 in this direction, then mass M1 would probably go in this direction and mass M2 would move in this direction. So you can see that after the collision, it's a two-dimensional motion because it's happening in X and Y coordinates. So the situation after the collision would be something like this. So mass M1 was over here initially and it was moving with a velocity v1 initially and then after the collision mass m1 moved in this direction so that this made an angle theta 1 over here and the velocity of mass m1 finally was in this direction and let's call this v1 final and mass m2 moved in this direction at an angle theta 2 and its velocity was v2 final. So if this is the case, we can say that equation 1 would hold true as well as the equation 2 if the collision was elastic in nature. Now let's go ahead and see what is happening along x and y axis. So along x axis also the momentum would be conserved and along y axis also the momentum would be conserved. So let's split this momentum into x and y axis. So let's take x axis first. So along x-axis, we can say that the initial momentum was m1 v1 initial. And we assume that mass 2 was stationary before the collision. So its momentum would also be 0. And this should equal to the momentum of mass m1 in x direction, which would be nothing but m1 into v1 final cos of theta 1 because you can see that the horizontal component of v1 final along x-axis is nothing but v1 final cos theta 1 and the momentum of mass 2 along x-axis would be m2 multiplied by v2 final cos theta 2 and if we were to build the same equation that is conservation of momentum along y-axis what we'll get is so let's label this as the equation along y-axis, what we have is that the momentum along y-axis before the collision is zero because you can see that the ball was moving only along x-axis and mass m2 was stationary, so there was no momentum along y-axis. And after the collision, we can see that the momentum of mass m1 is m1 v1 final sine of theta1 because you can see that the vertical component of y component of v1 final is v1 final sine theta 1 minus m2 v2 final sine theta 2. So these two equations would hold true for a collision where there are no external forces acting on the system. And as I said, if this collision was elastic, 
then the kinetic energy would also be preserved. In which case we can write for kinetic energy half m1 v1 square or v1 initial square should equal half m1 v1 final square plus half m2 v2 final square. And obviously we don't split kinetic energy along x or y components because it's a scalar quantity. So to sum up, in two-dimensional motion, if there are no external forces acting and the system is isolated, the momentum, the linear momentum before the collision would be preserved, that it remains same before and after the collision.